All right, ready? I was born ready. All right, guys, let's, let's bring on my. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on, guys? We're back here today with a brand new episode of What's New to Goo. I'm your host, Chris to Goo with Alpine, and we're here to talk about what's new. So today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics. DSP, which stands for Digital Signal Processing. I know, I know, the DSP world can be a little mysterious and confusing. Hopefully in the next few minutes I can clear up some of that confusion and help you understand that the DSP is quite possibly the number one sound upgrade you can make to your car. And while I'm at it, introduce you to our latest and greatest DSP, the PXE X09. Let's do it! Now the reason DSPs can be so overwhelming at times is because they're basically like a toolbox that has a bunch of tools in it that allow installers to solve problems as they're trying to install a brand new system in a vehicle. And as an end user, you're probably more interested in the final outcome than the tools it took to get there. Now each toolbox is different and they have tools that approach problems in different ways. The goal is to find the right toolbox with the right tools in it to get the job done. Now once you've built this system, you'll probably never have to open up that toolbox again. So it's kind of hard from a day-to-day -day basis to know where your money went. But I assure you that toolbox is hard at work in the background making things sound the way you want it to. Now imagine building a sound system without giving the installer a toolbox. The installer becomes limited as to how many problems he can actually solve. So what kind of problems are we referring to? Well, for example, we know that sound uh, is affected by whatever material it's been reflected off of. So who knows what type of effect the leather seats or the glass window has on the brand new set of speakers you had installed in the car. Your cymbal crashes may end up sounding more like a triangle. The installer can use the EQ built into the DSP to actually correct this error. Another big problem in the automotive environment is actually speaker placement. Have you ever noticed when you're listening to music live or at home, there's usually a sweet spot somewhere in the middle? That's because most music is recorded and produced in such a way that it sounds almost like you're listening to it live. So the musician's in the middle, and then you have several instruments kind of surrounding that singer. The phenomenon of stereo imaging is generally assuming that you have two speakers perfectly placed with you in the middle. Now think about your car and where the speakers are in relation to you. They're basically every which way. You got speakers in your door next to your feet. You got speakers in your sail panel. Heck, I've had cars with speakers in the headrest. That's <coughs> 2000. Most DSPs have a way to fix that. It's called time correction. It allows the installer to delay speakers at different distances, making all the music come at you at the exact same time, putting you right in the center of the vehicle. This gives you the feeling that the singer is actually on the hood of your dash. Can we get a better stock photo for that? And the last issue I'm going to mention is this. Let's say you really like your factory head unit or it's plain impossible to replace. Most DSPs have some type of tools that allow you to retain that head unit and get the signal that you need to run with an aftermarket sound system. Now every vehicle is different, every sound system is different, and every customer is different. So it's really important that you check in with your authorized Alpine dealer to see if the DSP you're looking at has the right tools to get the job done. So let's check out this new processor, the PXE X09. Now before I get into the features or the tools, uh, I just want to show you what this guy looks like. And here it is. You know, it's a very good looking processor, uh, has that kind of brushed metal look. Our Alpine logo is there in the middle with the glass surrounding it on it. Uh, you can see our outputs here on the back, inputs on the other side, a very clean layout. One thing I want to mention is it's it's a pretty large processor. This isn't a small you know device. Uh, I have a PXE 0850S if you guys are familiar, just for comparison reasons. You can see how, how large it is. Um, both in thickness and footprint. So uh, it is bigger, I mean, but it, it is capable of a lot more. All right, let's take a quick peek at what's inside the box. Looks like we got our manual. Um, we have, looks like a, a, blue, a Bluetooth adapter. Um, here is the USB cable for connecting to a computer or connecting to the controller. Here's uh, the footing to actually mount this to a surface. We got a power cable, harness. Um, here's the, looks like the remote commander. Very familiar, same as the 0850S. Looks like there's some adapters. Are there 16 of these? Oh yeah, there you go, 16. So if you're using all 16 high level inputs, there you go. 
So let's talk features and tools. Now this processor has a number of tools to help the installer solve sound and integration problems he or she may run into in the vehicle. Here's a few highlights. You have a full 1 Hz resolution parametric EQ, 31 bands for the output and 10 bands for the input. You have the ability to tune and adjust via PC or smartphone, which is super convenient. There's a matrix mixing tool for manually summing channels, and there's also a built-in output RTA, so you can actually visually check the input signals right from the PC software. That really comes in handy. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, what do I get? Well, you get Bluetooth streaming, which allows you to listen to smartphone music directly without the use of a radio. So think classic cars or vehicles without a radio at all. You also get an included remote commander, six presets so you can quickly recall different tunings. You get to control your bass remotely and it's high resolution compliant if you have a source that supports those type of files. Now there's a quick rundown of our latest processor, the PXC X09. Now I gotta tell you, this is the heart and soul of my Honda Civic build. I really consider it the number one upgrade I made to that thing. It helped me turn that mid-zone R-series system into a competition-ready vehicle. So if you're ready to take your vehicle to the next level of sound quality, I would absolutely give this processor a shot. So be sure to hit up your local authorized Alpine dealer and find out if PXE X09 has the right tools for your vehicle. Well, thanks for joining me on this episode of What's New To Go. Be sure to tune in next week. Uh, I'm gonna be having a special guest with me, Mr. Dan Greenwood. And we're actually going to be talking about the PXC X09 software. So we're really going to get in the weeds of that uh, particular episode. So I'm really excited about that. Well, that's all for me for this episode of What's New To Go. Uh, if you haven't done it yet, be sure to hit that like button. Follow me on Facebook, YouTube, both, either, none, up to you. I appreciate you guys' time. Stay safe out there, my friends. And tune in next time for What's New. <laughs>